The Department of Earth Sciences at the University of Cambridge is taking computational mineral physics to new levels. The eMinerals Toolkit, developed by Professor Martin Dove and his team, is a set of software tools that harnesses the power of grid computing. The simulations carried out on a large data set supplied by collaborators in Russia have been a major area of research into the peculiar phases of silica or SiO2. In this particular case we've been interested in silica glass and one of the things that's been very interesting, if you squash it it gets softer which is actually very counterintuitive. Mostly when you squash things all the atoms get squashed together, the bonds get squashed and the whole thing becomes rigid. But in this case it seems to get softer. So we have a, had a project to try and understand what was going on. It was a simulation based project uh, that, in which we actually simulated the motions of all of the atoms and we were able to link back the origin of, of, of this sudden increase in softness, we were able to link it back to the flexibility of the structure. Managing the data from the silica simulations presented the challenge of how to find user-friendly ways that researchers could view their results. CVIS is just one tool that uses XML to make data intelligible through standard tables and graphs in a web interface. There's a student who was given this, this is the Elites project to do in a reasonably short amount of time, just one term, eight weeks. Um, the use of the Cambridge system, being able to send hundreds of program requests and then for them to come back 24 hours later and then being able to put this into this easily seeable CCVIS program just made it a lot easier for me to actually analyse the data and see how it all linked together rather than having to spend most of my time ploughing through loads of different typing and ploughing through loads of different programs to get out the data. Prior to uh, the advent of, of anything like this, you would simply dump out all your data from the, the end of your programme or your analysis or whatever um, as a series of numbers, which is fine and it means something to you because this is the field you're working in. It doesn't necessarily mean something to anybody else and to be honest it might well not mean something to you in five years time because you'll have forgotten what you've done by then. Um, what XML offers is the ability to put uh, much more meaning around that data. And with something like CCVIS, which lets you just display it in a web browser with some graphs and some molecules, there's a much lower barrier to entry there. You can send something like that to your colleague who's never used your simulation program before and say, there you go, there's the graphs that you would want to draw, here's the molecular structures that you would want to see. Um, out of the output of this programme. What eScience promised us, uh, I think, was, was the ability to, to really have much higher throughput of the computations that we want to do. But what we also have gone on to, to, to realise is that if you can compute uh, three or four hundred simulations at the same time, you actually have to worry about how you manage the data. And so a large part of our eScience work has been concerned both with managing the data, but actually also how you represent the data in order to allow us to extract the information easily and quickly from that many files. Research student Jen Tao Chang has been working on the Shetran project, a study led by hydrologists from the University of Newcastle into the threat of flooding in an area of Lancashire. Jen Tao is using several tools in the eMinerals toolkit, including XML Fox to output specific data that can be shared via the storage resource broker, or SRB, and even Google Earth. The scientific goal of this project is trying to find out uh, which kind of lens, land uses changes cause the potentially high discharge of the outlet or potentially cause the flood. We cannot change the land use in the real world, so we have to simulate that. So do, in order to do that, uh, we, are doing, we, we need to run a large number of jobs yeah, using the computing grid. Also, we use the XML tool to generate XML data. The XML data includes KML data, which can be visualized in uh, Google Earth. So I think we're entering into a completely new era, and I think scientists are going to have enormous new capabilities. Uh, a few years ago, uh, you would have had to run many calculations on big supercomputers. Now our desktops are much more powerful than the resources we had just a few years ago. Fundamentally, we're, we're being faced with a new problem here, a new set of problems. I don't know what the unified principles are, but I find it fascinating to, um, to be able to deal with Google scale, if you like, quantities of data in any field, and still be able to refine that down 
to the sort of data that the human brain can sit and understand, because computers are, are as good as you like at collating data, managing it, putting it all in one place, but in an entirely brainless fashion. And there, there, there is an art, and I think it's still currently largely an art rather than a science, um, in refining that, uh, stripping out the useless bits, highlighting the useful bits and bringing it down so that ultimately it can come in through your eyes and through your ears because these, these are very small and, and low bandwidth ways of getting information between the world outside and the brain, but that's all we have. Scientists are not going to be able to go through all their files one by one. So the vision is that you scientists shouldn't have to do that. Scientists should have tools that sit above all their data. There's too much data out there, but we only have a brain this size, but we're the only ones that can do the thinking.